Good evening and welcome to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast. I am your host, Tamaria Jordan, and tonight I have the amazing pleasure of welcoming to the Confidence Centers of America stage, Dr. Brenetta C. Williams, also known as Dr. Bryn. Welcome, Dr. Bryn. Greetings, Tamaria. It is such an honor as well as a privilege to be on uh, this wonderful platform about confidence. Thank you so much. And we are thrilled to have you here. I know our guests are in for a treat. I had the amazing pleasure of hearing Dr. Bryn's latest sermon um, titled Do It On Purpose. So I tell you, you are in for a treat. I will give you a little bit of background about Dr. Bryn, but if this is your first time tuning into the Confidence Restored podcast, this is a show all about getting mentally fit through stories of faith, inspiration, and transformation. So along those same lines, let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Bryn. Dr. Bryn is the visionary founder and senior pastor of the Impact Worship Center International located in Chesapeake, Virginia. The Impact Worship Center is a church with a vision to impact lives for victorious living through Christ. IWCI is committed to serving those in need and reaching the lost at any cost. Dr. Williams received her undergraduate studies degree in business, business management, excuse me, from Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, which happens to also be my alma mater. <laughs> so we have some things in common. And after receiving her Bachelor of Science degree, she earned a Master's of Divinity from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology in Richmond, Virginia. She earned her doctorate in ministry from United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. Her past professional background includes marketing for several leading pharmaceutical companies. She has dedicated her life to providing medicines, education, and community services to those affected and infected with HIV AIDS. These experience has been instrumental in sensitizing Dr. Brand to the suffering of others, which leads me to the next point. Dr. Brand has been blessed to minister locally and internationally. And for all of our listeners out there, we thank you for tuning in wherever you are. Dr. Brand is passionate about foreign missions. She has also served on an African crusade team to Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Cape Town, Durban, Mauritius, Soweto, and Johannesburg, South Africa. She has also ministered in the Dominican Republic, as well as China and Thailand. So her reach stretches far and wide, and we just thank God for her life and her ministry. Most recently, she led an Operation Impact Missions and Ministry Team to Nairobi, Kenya. In addition to what you've just heard, Dr. Williams is also the visionary and CEO of Positive Impact Outreach Incorporated. This nonprofit organization is dedicated to positively impacting lives of those in need through the love of Christ. Positive Impact seeks to empower, provides needed services to the elderly, women, homeless, and disadvantaged youth. Dr. Williams is a native of South Boston, Virginia, and currently resides in Chesapeake, Virginia with her husband and daughter. And I again, want to welcome her to the Confidence Restored stage tonight so that she can tell us more about her life, her ministry, and her impact that she is making. So Dr. Williams, how have life events shaped the woman that you are or have become? Well, Tamara, first of all, thank you again for having me and allowing me to share uh, concerning faith and our confidence in God. Oftentimes, uh, we uh, focus on confidence in ourselves, uh, but the word of God tells us uh, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And it's not our strength that we're operating in, but it, that confidence comes from strength in him. And I can truly say that uh, on this journey called life, uh, it's a 
journey that's connected by seasons. And I've experienced some amazing mountaintop experiences, and but I've also endured, um, you know, some seasons that really challenged me. Uh, difficult and challenging seasons uh, belong to all of us from time to time. But every season, every experience, every experience, every event uh, played a role in developing my destiny. Uh, actually, it takes the good, the bad, and the ugly to mold us and make us and to shape us. Uh, and the Bible lets us know that all things work together for good uh, to them that love the Lord and are called according uh, to his purpose. And so I realize that God is constantly preparing us uh, in our now uh, for our next. Uh, even years ago when I was in the pharmaceutical industry, God was really sensitizing me to the suffering of others as I was working with HIV and AIDS patients. And so he was preparing me even then uh, for my now. And so following God's passions has certainly lead, led me, you know, to my purpose. I love that. Your now is preparing you for your next. And that is so true. And you definitely have accomplished a lot. And as you mentioned, through the power of God working through you, you have created an amazing ministry as the visionary founder and senior pastor of the Impact Worship Center in Chesapeake, Virginia. Can you share with our listeners more about why you started IWCI and also what they can expect when they visit your church or if they tune in virtually? Yes, I am humbled and grateful to serve such an amazing people. They are God's people, and I'm just honored uh, to serve them uh, as their pastor. Uh, I've been in ministry for over 25 years, and I'm basically pastoring just in these uh, last seven, and God has opened doors for me to minister locally, nationally, and internationally, uh, as you shared earlier. And there's just no greater joy than seeing lives saved, delivered, and transformed uh, through the power of God. Uh, in 2015, um, I just felt the tugging from the Holy Spirit uh, that God wanted to shift my assignment, that God was shifting me, shifting me from uh, an evangelist uh, uh, to the pastorate. And so God, he gave me a mandate and a vision to start a church uh, where uh, lives uh, could be saved, delivered, uh, where uh, people could grow in him. Uh, and he is, I have have a nurturing uh, spirit, and God just has allowed me all of those uh, different entities to come together. And so he birthed the Impact Worship Center, and I'm just humbled and grateful uh, for the journey that the Lord has us on. That's awesome. So speaking of that journey, you are also the visionary and CEO of Positive Impact Outreach Incorporated. Can you tell us more about what gave you that passion to provide needed services specifically to the elderly, women, homeless, and disadvantaged youth? Sure. You also asked me what people can expect when they attend the Impact Worship Center. We're a live church with loving people and a life-changing world. We're very, very, very much committed uh, to outreach and, and just impacting people's lives in a positive way. And actually, the church evolved out of uh, the uh, 501c uh, organization, uh, Positive Impact. I've always had a passion for the elderly uh, and doing outreach. And of course, that spilled over into youth or disenfranchised youth. And wherever there was a need, we were constantly trying to um, trying to trying to serve. And so, out of the outreach ministry, uh, the church evolved. Uh, also, with Positive Impact, we were uh, blessed to be able to minister to women. That's one of my greatest passions, empowering women and helping them to walk in their purpose and their destiny and to overcome obstacles and things of that nature. And prior to the pandemic, we were holding a conference at the oceanfront each year called Destined to Impact. And that was an amazing conference. People came from near and far and I mean, their lives were really changed. And it was just something that we look forward to, uh, to come in and to, you know, be in power to move forward in our next. And, and so Positive Impact has taken a little bit of a backseat now that I'm, you know, pastoring, um, but we try to um, work in both diligently. Very nice. So do you anticipate having an, a conference, uh, like a virtual conference, perhaps? 
Yes, I'm looking at that and praying about that. So you will probably see something well soon. Awesome. Fantastic. So what some of our listeners may not know from our introduction is that you also released Breaking Forth, Desti- Breaking Forth to Destiny, Arising from Where You Are to Where God Has Destined You to Be. So you released your book, but I would love to hear from you what prompted you to write the book. And also similar to the earlier question, what can readers expect? Why? Wow. This book is just a culmination of many years. Um, I've been trying to find the time to actually sit down uh, and and to do it. And during the pandemic, it was a blessing because God allowed me the time to really be able to bring it all together. This is a book of empowerment. It speaks to us no matter where we are on our spiritual journey. If we're young and we're just trying, we're seeking our purpose and trying to discover the God's plan and path for our lives, this book is for you. If you have been on this journey for a while and you sense that God is moving you and he's shifting you in another direction, uh, Breaking Forth to Destiny uh, is a wonderful tool. Uh, Many of us, we experience breakthroughs. We are able to be delivered uh, from situations and circumstances, delivered from difficult seasons, but yet we uh, somehow get caught. We become stuck uh, in that in-between place and we become paralyzed into inactivity. We don't actually break forth. And this is what this book actually helps us to do, to break forth, to break forth, uh, you know, come, get past the obstacles, get past the giants, get past all of the uh, distractions. And so this book challenges us uh, to break forth, to rise from where we are uh, to where God truly has destined us to be. I love that. And you said a lot with regard to just like your own journey and breaking forth, but not being stagnant. And so it made me think about hearing from God. You made a comment earlier that you felt in your spirit and you that you were called to go into pastoring your church. What advice would you give to listeners who might have a question with regard to how do you hear from God? Like if they they don't know. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, I I actually did a Bible study um, last night, and and it was just the passage of scripture in 1 Kings chapter 19, and it was talking about when God was speaking uh, to Elijah when he was in the cave. Uh, They said there was a fire. God was not in the fire. There was an earthquake. God was not in the earthquake. The mountain shaped. Um, And all of these things were happening all around Elijah. And these are ways in which many times people expect God uh, to speak in a loud way. Uh, They're looking for him to, you know, crack open the sky or the thunder to roll. But oftentimes, God speaks uh, in a silent voice. And when he spoke to Elijah, he spoke to him in a quiet, he spoke to him in a a whisper. And so we just have to be open uh, to hearing God. Uh, God is constantly speaking. Even when he's silent, God is speaking. There are times where he will give us the green light to go. There's times when he will give us uh, the red light to say stop. And then there are just times where we're just uh, in, in a, on a coasting. We're just waiting on him. Uh, but we have to understand uh, that God is speaking. He will speak to us through his word. He'll speak to us uh, in a whisper. He'll speak to us through other people. He'll speak to us through a podcast like this. So God is constantly speaking. We just have to quiet ourselves and then tune our ear to hear what the spirit is saying. Man, I love that. That, that is really great advice. Thank you for sharing that. And earlier you mentioned your spiritual journey. So I'm sure that you've learned a lot um, over the years and just throughout time in general. As you mentioned earlier, individuals go through tough times and then we have great times. So what has been the most impactful lesson that you've learned to date? My, there are so many. 
<laughs> there are so many. You know, the, the most impactful is just to never give up, uh, just to keep going. You know, that sounds so simple, but it, you know, to it takes a level of faith, it takes a level of trust, it takes us not leaning and depending on our own understanding, but really acknowledging God and, and just uh trusting Him, releasing our life to Him for Him to lead us and God us to allowing Him to navigate. Um, oftentimes uh, I find people are frustrated or they're anxious uh, because they don't know what the next step is. They don't know what the next move is. And it's okay not to know what the next is. All we have to do is be in a posture where we're trusting God and we're allowing him uh, to navigate. We're allowing him to lead us and to guide us. And so um, I just find uh, that, you know, through each situation in my life, through every event, through every experience, uh, uh, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, that God, we grow from it. And God uses those experiences, uh, you know, to mold us and make us and to, to shape us and to help to develop us, you know. Sometimes people feel like when I'm going through, this is going to destroy me. But no, you know, it's really to develop you. And if you can just keep going, keep trusting, keep believing, you know, just, you know, draw closer to God and keep going, keep it moving because God has a plan and a purpose uh, for our lives. That is beautiful. And, and literally in my head, I'm like, I love that what we might think will destroy us is actually sent to develop us. Yes. That everything you said is powerful. <laughs> um, in, my, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I need to remember that myself. And even for our listeners, I'm sure that those like the nuggets that you're dropping and yet that you're sharing about your journey, your life, your inspiration, it, it's so helpful. So you have worn many hats um, <laughs> in your in your lifetime and over the years. What advice would you give to others to help them maintain balance? Balance is essential. Balance is so crucial. Balance is one of those things that uh, we really have to do on purpose, that we have to be intentional about. Uh, life comes at us hard. It comes at us from many different angles. And, and, you know, many of us have dreams and we have responsibilities and we're trying to do so many things, uh, but we have to find uh, a balance. And uh, a part of balance is basically setting boundaries. Uh, you know, there was a time in my ministry where I would just be so excited to get an invitation to go everywhere, you know, and I would say God would go and I would overextend myself and I was, you know, becoming worn out and stressed out. But now, you know, I, I prioritize, I really listen to the Lord and I understand that every door, every invitation, it, it may not necessarily be the invitation that God would have for me. And so I, a lot of balance came in my life when I began to really, you know, you know, seek God and establish boundaries. Um, you know, time management is another piece. You know, uh, many times we there are areas where things that we really enjoy and we want to spend all of our time in that area, but we have to maintain a balance that maybe we may need to do that for two hours and then go and do something else that we really that's necessary. And so we have to maintain um, a, a balance uh, overall. Um, you know, and just establishing priorities in your life, you know, because if we just get up in the morning, uh, we can go in a hundred different directions, but when your life is prioritized uh, to purpose, uh, then it, your day is much more ordered. Uh, in my life, you know, there's the, my relationship with God, then there's family, and then there's the work of ministry. And so I have to prioritize and make sure that I give the proper attention to all of those areas and making sure that I'm still fulfilling, you know, my God-given assignment and my relationship is growing with God because oftentimes we can get so caught up in the work of ministry that we miss God. That's a really good point. It is so true. So I, I feel like you're speaking to me, but I'm sure there are a lot of guests who are grateful for this advice. Um, prioritizing to purpose. I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's so true because you're right. There's so many distractions now true. that it is easy to get off track. So uh, great tips. So with regard to connecting with you, with your church, your ministry, uh, how can our listeners get in contact with you specifically? 
Yes, you can reach me on my website. Uh, that's www.drbrenwilliams.org. That's www.drbrenwilliams.org. All of my contact information is there. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's simply Bryn Williams or uh, Brunetta Williams Ministries. And our church uh, website is theimpact757.org. Theimpact757.org. Fantastic. So the last question I have for you is what is one personal affirmation that you live by? I would have to say walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, that has sustained me in so many different areas, you know, even just stepping out and, you know, starting ministry, starting a church, you know, it's been totally a faith walk uh, these uh, last seven years and, you know, leading in a pandemic, it has been walking by faith and not by sight, you know, I don't think there's a manual anywhere uh, for someone to pastor in the midst of a pandemic, uh, but it's been a faith walk, but through that, God has really grown my faith and uh you know I, I, we just trust him i've seen the level of faith of the church uh to grow tremendously uh during this season so i just encourage you not to look at what you see believe beyond what you see um, believe by a radical kind of faith and god will do the miraculous he will do amazing things that you cannot even imagine yes, ma'am i love that so I, I do have, in, in hindsight, one additional question. Sure. Is there a question that I did not ask that you wish I would have? <laughs> you have been so thorough. We've covered a lot of territory. Uh, nothing's not specifically. I, I did want to say that my book, and if you contact, if you go on the website, the uh, drbrenwilliams.org, and that's where uh, you're able to uh, access the book as well, Breaking Forth to Destiny. Fantastic. And I'll also um, add a plug in here. She has t-shirts and mugs. I was trying to decide which item I was going to buy with my book, but I decided on a mug because I thought about it. I could have some tea while I'm reading my book. So looking forward to receiving that and just so yes. grateful to have you on the show. And to our listeners, thank you all for tuning in week after week. We really appreciate your support of this show all over the world. We are so grateful. And we know that we would not be able to do this without the power of God behind us and helping us at, throughout, as Dr. Bryn mentioned, the pandemic and just being able to provide a platform to share these testimonies. So Dr. Bryn, I just want to thank you for being a guest on the show. And before we leave tonight, um, I will close us out in prayer and then we will um, let you all uh, enjoy your evening. So thank dear you, God, Esther. thank you. Thank you. Dear God, we come to you now giving you praise, glory, and honor, thanking you for this day and every day. We pray that you would forgive us for any sins that we've committed, any thoughts that are not of you. Lord God, we just thank you for each and every one listening to this show. We thank God for Dr. Bryn and her family and her ministry and all the individuals connected to what she is doing for the kingdom of God. We thank you for her life. We thank you for the legacy that she is building. We thank you for the ministry that you have brought forth from the belly of her experiences and her spirit, Lord God. We thank you for her calming spirit, her ability to follow your voice and listen and be able to be obedient to do what you have called her to do. We thank you for everything that she is doing to help your children. And we pray that everyone connected to her ministry, Lord God, and connected to her, that they would continue to be blessed and that everyone under the sound of our voice, Lord God, that if they are going through any times of trial or tribulation, that you let them know that you are with them, that you see them and that you care. And as Dr. Bryn said, even when you are silent, you are still speaking. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for another opportunity to be here yet again. And we just pray for everyone, Lord God, that you would come against anything that is not of you, any spirits that would put fear in their hearts or in their minds or stop them from doing what you have called them to do, Lord God. We come against that right now. We bind it. We bind the spirit of, we bind the, the evil spirit 
of suicide and depression and anxiety that is attacking individuals all over the world. And we pray that they would have hope, that they would have hope. And as Dr. Bryn said, just keep going. We thank you again for this time. We thank you for who you are. And we thank you for allowing us to be born again through the power of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be on your platform. It has been a blessing. You've certainly inspired and empowered me as well. You're welcome. And thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners. And until next time, keep on keeping on and be blessed.